Welcome to Film 360, the Full Circle Film Show. Today we've got a show that I think is going to cover some topics that people just don't talk about enough in the film world. So sit right there and enjoy Film 360. <laughs> Before we get any farther, I really want to thank our sponsor, Creative Stream. They are they're here in Provo, and they're letting us use this awesome space. We'll run a little ad here shortly so you can see what it looks like. But it's they've got everything here that you could pretty need amazing. For, yeah, for uh, for smaller productions and so forth. So awesome stuff. Anyway, my guest tonight, really excited. We've been friends for uh, over a decade now. Wow, yeah. that long? Yeah, Jeez. crazy, right? Time flies. This is Nathaniel Drew. My name is Nate Drew. He is. In, I would say, just about every corner of the film world here in Utah, he is an actor, he's a musician, a composer, a, <laughs> uh, boy, I mean, all of his titles A philanthropist a and enjoyer of life. I thought you were going to say philanderer. <laughs> philanderer. <laughs> I'm really glad he's not that. His wife's great. So, um, <laughs> real quick. Wait, what? <laughs> real, real quick, we're going to cut to a, uh, a little trailer that I made for Nate being on the show. He wrote the music for that. Well, he, he adapted the music <laughs> for that video as well. So, anyway, uh, we had a conversation a few days ago, mm -hmm. and it was pretty enlightening. So I wanted to I want to kind of continue that conversation. I feel like this is something that we need to hear more about, and that is getting money <laughs> for your production. So do you want to just talk a little bit about what you're doing these days and oh. kind of why you're qualified to have this discussion? So right now I'm doing a lot of filming and content creation with a lot of really rich folk. Um, so we, we've recently represented a guy named Kai-Fu Lee, who's kind of the Bill Gates of China, uh, with uh, a New York Times bestselling book campaign, uh, which we also did a lot of different content creation for. We've uh, represented a lot of very multi-multi-millionaires. We've created 96 consecutive New York Times bestselling book campaigns, but our focus isn't actually the books, our focus is on the business itself because a book is more like a glorified uh, business card and, and what that allows you to do is to create more business. And, and that has a lot to do with a lot more content creation. Again, that content creation is, is a, a more advanced version of a business card. Um, but when you get into business and, and interacting with very rich people, and understanding what they're looking for when they invest into things, it's, it's a pretty important thing when you're looking for investors in a film. So, and, th and this may not feel, for a lot of you watching, this may not feel directly related, what he's talking about with the, the books and everything. It may feel kind of a couple degrees away from film, but from after our conversation, I realize more and more it's, it's the, same <laughs> the same people that you're trying to reach. Just it's it's about what they like. Investing's investing, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think the very first question, which this is one probably a lot of us have heard, but the very first question is: You are ready to get your thing made. You've got it written. Mm -hmm. You've got maybe some pieces of your creative team. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming no names, if it's like uh -huh. most cases. Uh -huh. But you've you've got all this momentum building in your uh -huh. small group. Right. What do you do? <laughs> Well, so, I mean, there's two different trains of thoughts on this, right? So you have the festival route where you get your friends together, you film something cool, and it's really fun, and you go out and you just have, like, a ton of fun, and you put it into festivals, which is, is awesome and a lot of fun to do. Um, but then there's the more serious route where, where it's, okay, we're actually going to get this in front of a large audience. So now what do we do? 
So Brian and I were talking about this. My, my very first suggestion is let's secure some funds so that you can get the right package together. That means for an investor, what they're looking for is a picture that you can paint, a very vivid picture, so that they can see not just who's involved in the film, including uh, actors from Hollywood, hopefully, uh, but also what are the numbers? What is it gonna cost line by line? How much, where is it gonna be distributed? What kind of funds will actually come in when you release it? What are you gonna be spending on, on marketing? Like, what is this, this big picture of what you're creating? And if an investor can get excited about it, if, I mean, this is a sales job, right? This is marketing and sales one-on-one. How do you get someone excited about what you're doing? Well, you've, you've got to make it real. You got to show them, yeah, look, I have 50,000 in escrow. I went out and I got this main actor from Hollywood so that now we're, we're completing this package of, we know what we're doing. We can show you um, exactly what we're aiming for and here's the returns you're going to get, because this is not about your film necessarily, this is about how they view your film. What do I get as an investor? What, what do I get out of this? Cool, I get to be attached to it. And I've seen a lot of you know, um, social media, uh, you know, Kickstarters and things like that, where they say, hey, you get your name as a producer on this film. That's kind of getting tired out a little bit. Some people still kind of are like, oh cool, I can be called a, a producer on this film, cool. But most people, especially high level investors, don't really care about their name being a producer. They care about what is this film? What is it gonna be doing? Who is it gonna be reaching? How much money am I gonna be making from this? And how deeply am I going to really feel what this movie is? And if you can hit those points with them, they're going to be an investor in your film. I think something that was never explained to me well mm -hmm. <laughs> is the fact that what you're putting together is a business plan with, I would say, a greater degree of emotion attached to it. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a business plan. You have to show the numbers. You have to show all that. But you also have to get them emotionally invested. If you can do that with a regular business, great. But people are less likely to get emotionally attached to, you know, sprockets or <laughs> whatever it is that they're building. Mm -hmm. But a movie that has potentially a social impact, that's a whole different story. And that's something you talked about, too, mm -hmm. is the social impact. Yeah, so this is true of any business. If every single business, there is a root uh, effect that you have on society. It doesn't matter if it's a sprocket. If you're creating one of those little things that goes on a tripod, that is helping someone do something better. It has a social impact. And so a good business is going to say, what are we actually doing to help other people? What are we doing in society that helps people out? And so you have to think about, in your film, what am I doing in this film that is actually going to be helping people out? How am I improving someone's life from this film? There, there are some films, you'll notice, if you watch a very depressing movie that I've seen over and over and over and over again in the festival circuit about suicide, if it ends on a note that's just really sad and depressing, nobody's going to buy it. Nobody wants to watch that. Nobody wants to go home and just be depressed out of their mind and want to commit suicide. That is not something that's helping society. So what is your film actually doing to help someone? Now you can look at something like Re Re Requiem for a Dream, um, where it goes to the, the end possibilities of getting into drugs and these horrific things and you say well that actually does help society because it shows you these are the horrific things that can happen if you do drugs so I'm not going to do it so that actually has social consequences that are actually very positive um, <clears throat> there are some look if you're making a film right now and you don't know how this is helping anyone else you've got to go back to the very beginning and say okay why am I doing this film what is this actually doing for a society? And if you can really, in one sentence, name how this is helping someone, then you can start to figure out who is helping. Um, you can start to figure out who the different types of investors that you can approach. Because this is the same thing as marketing and sales in any other business. You've got to identify who it is that you're actually helping. And the person you're helping the most is probably going to be the, your biggest investor. And just fun, uplifting... These are good words to attach into a, into a definition, mm -hmm. into this statement of sentiment, I guess you might call it. Mm -hmm. But it's not enough. You need mm -hmm. more. You need 
I think, a, a sentence. You should be able to put it into a very simplified version, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Let's see if I can remember. I, we, we just filmed some, some videos for a guy who, who helps multi-million dollar businesses become billion dollar businesses. And he says, you don't want a mission statement, you want a purpose statement. So, so what is the purpose of this film? What is this film doing? Not the mission, the purpose. <clears throat> Excellent. Okay, we're going to just take a minute right now. We're going to uh, give a little shout out to Creative Stream again for letting us, letting us film here. So we're going to roll a quick commercial. Welcome back. I think this is a great starting point for anybody. This business plan that that you're talking about building mm-hmm. some of this, some of these pieces. So let's say you've got your business plan now. You've okay. got it in hand. <laughs> <laughs> now what the heck do we do with this? So uh, once you have um, a business plan, a profit and loss statement, you have. Are you saying you have an actor attached to it? You have no, you have no, a package. Just okay, have, just the business plan. Just have the plan. Okay, written. and we, you know, we've maybe looked at actors. We've considered these are some of the actors we think would be good fits, and this is how much we think they'll cost. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now it's time to figure out how dedicated you are to this. Is this really something that's your purpose in life? Is this something that's going to going to be a part of you? If it is. You're going to do what it takes to figure out how to get some money into escrow. So that could be approaching family members or friends. That could be, a, it doesn't matter who it is. You have a circle of influence and you've got to specifically approach the circle of influence. You may have a house you have escrow and you may have uh, credit cards. I, I know several people who have built businesses from 0% credit cards that have made massive, massive multi-million dollar businesses just from these little credit cards, you've got to figure out how to get some capital. And you put that capital into escrow. You don't have to touch this money. In fact, you can have that as fluid as you want and you can put it back into your house, you can put it back into whatever, but you've got to have money so that you can show um, an agent of an actor and say, look, we've got this money, this is the actor we want for this, this is earmarked for your actor, Let's talk about him doing this film. We've got this business plan. We've got the script. I want you to read the script and I want you to get back to me. So this is when you actually start creating a package. And a package means we are creating a, uh, a group of people who are, are competent and who, who will actually draw an audience, including the actors. So actors will draw an audience. Um, the crew will be competent enough to create the film that we're talking about. Um, and you've got to show this to an investor to show them the big picture. This is our picture. This is what we're doing the, and, and make it real for them. And that's when an investor starts to get really interested and excited about something like this. If they start to really see, oh, cool, you've got this B-list actor who I know. And, and again, you've got to approach the right investors, right? Because they've got to be... I mean, if you're doing, say, an Austin, Jane Austen style film, it's got to be an investor who understands Jane Austen. It's got to be someone who's excited about doing something in this genre. And then if you get a certain actor, typically they'll understand who that actor is because they're in that world. And you want to get an actor who is in that world in some way, someone that your audience is going to relate to, right? Excellent. So... I, I, this is this is one of the things that I have wondered about. Is how do you progress? I mean, how do you negotiate with with agents, with these actors? What's what's that process like? Is it all email? Do you have to go meet them in person? Do you? Well, so there's a thing that I that I really believe in. Um, there was some 
some study done on intimate relationships uh, in the early 1900s, and it's still kind of the gospel of psychology today as far as marriage and, and intimate relationships. Um, I, we have created a thing called the 12 Steps of Intimacy, and if you skip any two steps, it doesn't matter where in progression you skip those steps, then it feels uh, that the other person will feel like it's, you're a pickup artist. Um, it, like a one, you're trying to get a one night stand type of a thing. And so in any relationship that you create, um, you've got to progress as slowly as you can um, as far as them feeling good about the relationship. And the best way to approach any relationship is intimately. That means face to face. So if you can figure out a way to get face to face with someone, that is the best way to do it. So you may not know someone, you may figure out um, that there are other people who, there, there are apps that will actually tell you on social media if you have, so if you're looking for a specific, specific agent or a specific actor, you can actually figure out who of your friends on social media knows those people and you can figure out how to get an introduction. So once you have an introduction, as fast as you can, figure out how to get as intimate with that person as you can. So if that means getting a phone call and then flying out, great, that's a great way to do it but get as intimate as you possibly can with what you have. Um, again, I recommend highly sit right down in front of them, eye to eye, and you can talk about it. That is the best way to influence anyone. Something that came up last week, and I, this is going to come up a lot, I think, on this show, mm -hmm. is networking. It seems to me that networking is the key because networking will open doors for you, so you have to be a good networker. In fact, I've studied the 12 steps of intimacy just a little bit. I mean, very, very little. Mm -hmm. And I recommend any filmmaker should get acquainted, at least on a very primary level, with that because it is the key to good networking. It's the key to good, not just getting investors, but it, it'll, un, it'll open all kinds of doors. It's uh, relationships. Yeah, yeah, yeah in, in your life. I mean, not just... And you can have filmmaking. a general relationship where you have masks on it's a very skin deep relationship which is fine those type of relationships don't typically yield the type of investment that we're looking for here you really want to have a connection so michael ovitz um he was he basically owned 70 percent of the actors in hollywood for many years he was an agent who rose and created his own agency he owned hollywood and he told stories of he would research an actor so much that there was, there was an actor, I don't know who it was, Sean Penn or somebody, and he researched him and he realized that he loved NASCAR. And so he, he didn't know anything about NASCAR, but he went and he researched NASCAR so much that he could have an in-depth conversation about NASCAR with Penn so that he could just have this really intimate thing with him so that he, he, could, dis, he could persuade him to be his agent. That was his thing. I am going to get to know this guy as deeply as I possibly can. It, if he is, you know, if you figure out that an actor is totally involved in the NBA, for example, and his team is the, the Cleveland Cavaliers, if you can go in, watch some games, do some research, figure out, oh, yeah, it's terrible that LeBron left for, for the Los Angeles Lakers, but now they have these guys, and, and you can have a conversation with them on that level about their favorite topic, you're going to persuade some people. So if you're looking to persuade and be intimate with someone, do some research, get to know the person. And, and I guess the next step is make sure you don't argue with them. <laughs> That's what we were talking That's about before the show, right? Before, yeah. Oh, absolutely. I, think, I mean, I think that's one of the most important steps of good networking is you have to let a lot of your, your biases and prejudices just kind of mellow uh, mm -hmm. at least, uh -huh. if not just kind of let them go. Because you're going to network with people who think completely differently than you do about everything imaginable, even yeah. things that you don't think anyone could possibly think differently on. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I, <laughs> I do think that's important. More, especially where egos. Big yeah, egos yeah. are, I don't know, they're a part of anything where big money's involved. But with film, there's, there's a dual yeah. ego. Yeah. I feel like there's the creative and the, and the monetary ego that get involved there, right. which can really... By the way, so for, for example, if you want to get in with Brian, 
we can start talking about comic books. We can start talking about superheroes. We can start mostly, talking... Mostly the movies. But mostly, yeah. <laughs> but he likes the cartoons, too. That's true. His kids especially like the cartoons. Uh, and we can talk about um, doing potty videos with Thor. <laughs> I, oh, my gosh. I didn't put that in your scenario. He played Thor in the potty training video for my kids. Uh, you can go check that out. Superhero oh. Basics Potty Training. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's on me. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I feel like this is probably the single most neglected part mm-hmm. of filmmaking is what we've, what we've talked about yeah. here. I just... Nothing in my film school really prepared me for this this in between part. Right. Full scale production I can handle. Writing the business plan I can handle. Right. But this kind of in between stuff, it's it's like the secret, right? And I think we've, yeah. we've maybe rolled back the curtain just a little bit on the process. So I, so getting back to to basketball, NBA. I, I love the Jazz, by the way. If you didn't know this, um, I, after the game, Doc Rivers, who's the coach of the Clippers, who we were playing, we beat the Clippers. And uh, he was talking about it. It was a, it was a rough game. It, it was very hard fought game. And I, I can't remember what, what one of the reporters said, but he was he was talking about how difficult it was. He says, "Of course it was difficult. That's why we do this. It wouldn't be as fun if it weren't that difficult. We wouldn't be pushing for this, and it, it wouldn't make any sense for us to be playing basketball if it weren't something." that was challenging for us. We want the challenge. We welcome the challenge because it's more fun that way. And I'm, I'm telling you right now, welcome the challenge. Get into this. Get Have fun with it. Welcome the challenge of figuring out who you want in your film. Don't just go with local guys. Local guys are good. There are some local guys who, I, if that's your A-list person, that's great. There are, there are a few local guys who are actually in Los Angeles who you could get into your film who actually do have some of this pull. But get someone who is actually in the genre of film you're looking for and has an audience that you can pull from and figure out how to get into their heads and get them. Accept the challenge. Challenge accepted, right? There's, there's two stories that, that I, I love. One is, one is uh, Dennis Hoffman um, mm-hmm. when, he, when they approached Dustin him Hoffman? to be... <laughs> <sighs> My head's not... Uh, anyway, yeah, when they approached him to be Hook uh. and they, you know, they could have done anything. But they knew that he really liked costumes. They knew that he really liked fun, cool costumes. So they didn't tell him much about the movie. They just showed him what he would wear. <laughs> and he was done. He was sold. Yeah. Uh, and he was fantastic. And then the other story is actually based on that story. I was working at a summer camp. Uh-huh. Uh, Aspen Grove. Okay. He, Nate uh-huh. worked there too. I once upon a time. And I knew I wanted this one guy to be my villain in my movie. <laughs> but I didn't think he'd want to do it. So I wrote the script, and in the first page, the villain said all these things that I knew this guy would just eat up. And it, he didn't finish the first two pages, but he came to my room and said, can I be this guy? <laughs> yeah, I mean, seriously, yeah. and it's a, it was a silly short film just for fun, but it matters. Paying attention to what people want and what people need, yeah. it matters, and it can make a huge difference. I've seen these short films, and they're fantastic. He's, the he actually yeah. scored that film. No, you scored it. Oh, I just, I just uh, kind of arranged it. it yeah. <laughs> he took a, a rather. It was really good though. You, what you wrote was we great. We started with some. We started with some nice themes. I think so. Uh-huh. Awesome. Okay. Well, Nate, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, Nate is actually again. He he's acting, and so uh, just a little plug for my series, mm-hmm. which just went up on Amazon Prime. It's called Phoenix Inc. As in Incorporated, and Nate's actually repping over here. You want to yeah. show? Oh, oh yeah, heck yes. I I will do a Superman here. Except I'm not actually going to pop my buttons, because that's just weird. Look, Phoenix, Phoenix Inc., Inc., guys. Oh, yeah. So Check it out, baby. Check it out on Amazon Prime. If you have a, a, a local project that you're working on that you would like to come talk on the show, please do. I would love to hear from everybody, from shoestring budgets and no-string budgets, all the way up to you know, the highest productions that we get in the state. So just reach out at the Film360 uh, page on Facebook. And like us, follow us, share us around with the filmmaking community because we're, we're not getting paid for this. My whole goal is just to share good information about film, especially on the local scene. So thank you so much for joining us again. Thanks for Creative Stream. And, uh, yeah, Nate, Nate, thanks again for, for joining us. You've been amazing. You're welcome. Film 360. Hey. <laughs> thanks so much. We'll see you next week on Film 360.